Hey there friends, in this video, I'm gonna share four things you're doing that are secretly making you fat. Number one. Mindless eating. So eating while you're distracted, like reading, watching TV, scrolling on your phone on social media, cooking or meal prepping and eating while doing it. Anything that distracts you from focusing on what you're eating and how much you're eating. It also distracts you from chewing properly and recognizing when you're full. Now, I'm sharing this video because I did all of these things. I've lost 130 pounds and I've kept it off for seven years. At the beginning of my journey, before I figured out what worked, I was trying to lose weight and I couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting any results. Then I realized there were things that I was doing that was making it very hard for me to lose weight and I didn't realize that I was doing them. Once I figured it out, I changed some things up and I was able to get the results and keep it off for seven years. So mindless eating is one of the biggest things that I was doing consuming hundreds of calories without even realizing. Because one of the things I like to do was read. I love to read and snack at the same time. Get a good book, lay down on the couch, and I would usually snack on seeds or nuts. I'd grab a whole bag and I'd read my book, I'd get into it. By the time I was done reading my book, I'd almost be finished an entire bag of seeds or nuts. And not realizing I probably consumed hundreds, maybe even a thousand calories without even realizing it. Your brain actually takes at least 20 minutes from the time you start eating to send signals of fullness. So I wasn't giving my body a chance to recognize that it was even full. By the time I've done my book, I look at the bag, I'm like, oh my goodness, I ate almost the whole thing. Now I'm overstuffed, ate way too many calories and there's no turning back. So what I, what I started doing to fix it was setting a place at the table and eating without distraction, focusing on what I was eating, how much I was eating, and making sure that I was chewing properly because I always had this thing where I would take like two chews and swallow the whole thing. And so I wasn't really properly digesting my food or giving my body the chance to figure out that it was eating and it was getting full. The other thing is I didn't take away snacking while reading or watching TV because I like doing that and that's cool. What I do now though is I portion my snack out, then get my book, get on the couch or put a movie on, I'll eat my snack, but it's now in portion. So I don't have any chance of overeating because I'm only eating what I portioned out, then I'm done, I still get to enjoy the movie with a snack or the book with a snack, but I'm not overdoing it in calories. You know, I still have to remind myself, like we eat veggies and dip with pretty much every dinner. I still have to remind myself sometime, like, Nicole, these are vegetables, like you have to actually chew them to digest them properly. And I still have to slow down, chew the carrot, chew the carrot, you don't need to rush this, chew the food. <laughs> so. Moving on to number two, and that was eating and buying food only marketed as healthy without checking the labels for the calories. So at the beginning of my journey, I assumed that if I only bought and ate food that was marketed as healthy, that I would automatically lose weight. The thing is with foods marketed as healthy, a lot of them have health benefits, but just because it says healthy on it doesn't mean low calorie. A lot of foods marketed as healthy, like the seeds and nuts I was talking to you about when I was reading and eating mindlessly, they're often loaded with calories or quite calorie dense. So if you're eating the healthy food without measuring it out or without checking the label, you could be consuming hundreds of calories without even realizing it. And the reason why I was snacking on the nuts when I was reading was because they are good for you. So I chose that thinking I was being healthy and that it would help me get results. However, um, I used to get the ones from Walmart. So I just like looked up the, I think it's called Joe's Tasty Travels. I used to love, I, I still do, the roasted salted sunflower seeds, the hauled ones, so the ones out of the shell. And I would read uh, and eat a bag of those. 
Well, a third of a cup of those is 330 calories. So there is my example of thinking that it's healthy. If you're eating and you're not measuring, you can be consuming a ton of calories and not even realize Even it. if it is healthy foods. Exactly. So now we still eat all those foods. I still eat nuts, I still eat seeds. It's great, it's got good health benefits, but I, I check the labels now. I look at all the packaging, I pick the best one. So for me, the best one means the one with the lower calorie count, and then I'll portion it out. That way I know for sure I'll be eating in a calorie deficit while enjoying healthy food, instead of consuming healthy foods or foods marketed as healthy without checking the label first. Number three, you guys might think this one is weird, but crash or fad diets at the i struggled with my, my entire life and i was always looking for a quick way to get the weight off why i continued to constantly turn to crash diets is because they worked at first so i would start to lose weight and i'd be like oh this is great so when one would fail i would go to another one thinking will i get results in the beginning well then i realized i'm getting the results in the beginning because I'm doing something different, basically eating less than I was before because a crash diet usually required me to take something massive away like all carbs or whatever, a whole food group. So of course I'd be naturally eating less because I'd be going with the crash diet. However, the crash diets were never sustainable. So once I got tired of taking away the food group and I started going back to my normal, just consuming everything without realizing, I would gain back what I lost plus more. So I ended up putting on more and more weight because of that until I hit my heaviest weight, which was 275 pounds. So once I realized these crash diets, they might get results in the beginning, but they're not sustainable, I started making small changes. My, and I share these on my channel all the time. Like my first two big changes was going from regular pop because I was drinking seven cans of Dr. Pepper a day, which is 140 calories a can and I switched to diet. So I didn't change how many, I just switched to the diet and I was saving myself like a thousand calories alone and that for me was a small change because I didn't want to give up pop and I didn't want to condense the amount of cans I was drinking per day. The other small change was I went from eating a bag of chips a night for a snack to a bowl. And so those were the small changes I started with, with then, which then led me into portion control where I didn't change what I was eating, just how much, and I used the serving sizes on the backs of the packages to help me do that. That's what helped me get the weight off and keep it off, and that's why it's been kept off for as long as it has. Number four, not counting condiments, cooking oil, liquid calories, and add-ons. And what I mean by add-ons are the cream and sugar you might put in your coffee. Um, any sort of like sauces, hot sauce, anything like that where you're adding it and you're not even thinking that it's actually adding calories. So I used to drink milk and in my coffee and when I was a teenager, I, I drank sugar. Uh, I put sugar in it. A teaspoon of sugar is 15 calories and a tablespoon of creamer is about 30 to 35 calories. So if you're just pouring that stuff in and you're not counting it because coffee is low calorie, you could be adding a lot of calories without even knowing it. The same with, um, I fell into this trap and a lot of people often do, they'll eat a salad to be healthy, but they don't realize they're not measuring their dressing. And so the salad's healthy, but then they're dumping about half a bottle of dressing and you end up adding hundreds of calories because two tablespoons of the ranch dressing that Kyle and I eat is 140 calories. So if you don't measure that out, it's a lot of calories. Big one for me was the uh, cooking spray in the pan. Mm. I was shocked when I found out there's 10 calories per second spray, right? That's about right yeah um it depends some of the cans this is the funny thing about cooking spray which is why it can be tricky some of the cans say zero some of them say five and some of them say ten now all things even if it says zero calories do contain some if, it's just that some the companies don't have to put it if it's under a certain amount yeah if it's edible it has calories yeah so that's the tricky thing. And the reason why we turned, we went to cooking spray was because I was just pouring cooking oil in the pan. I wasn't measuring it. And I was obviously using a ton of calories without realizing. So we started using cooking spray thinking it's gonna be less calories, but 
like a half second spray is a few calories. So I'd be like spraying like this for probably 30 seconds. That's a lot of calories. So it's about um, tracking. So we, I, I still have condiments if I want. I put some milk or whatever in my coffee. I prefer it black, but you know, you get the point. If you want something, like if I want something, I have it. It's just that I measure it out Sometimes I choose the low calories, sometimes the regular, but I always portion it out using a scale or measuring spoons or cups. And me and Nicole are not obsessed with calorie counting. No. We just, we're aware of it. So even the assumption is even black coffee doesn't have any calories, it has calories. I always actually, um, I drink, Kyle and I both drink a large black coffee in the morning before we do cardio. It's probably about two cups. It's of about coffee. two cups. And so I looked up like what two cups, like a large coffee is. It's about 10 calories. So we just like to know an idea so that we're staying within a window because that our, works for us. Because our minds used to go to like, okay, I'll write off the spray because there's no calories. I'll write off the coffee, no calories. I'll write off this, that it has calories. It, it, I even did it like um, last year, right before January, I was spraying the pan like crazy and I realized I was adding a lot of calories and I was trying to lose like a couple of pounds and it wasn't working and I realized, whoa, I'm like adding a ton of calories with the spray. So even now I have to check myself sometimes and go, no, even though you're not being obsessive, you still have to track it. Like, cause if I go overboard, I gain weight very easily. That's the body type I have. And, and again, the only way to lose weight is to be in a calorie deficit. And so if you're eating too much, you're not going to lose weight. And the reason why I'm making this video on top of what I already said is because we get a lot of comments from you guys saying like, I'm really trying hard to lose weight, but I'm not getting any results and I don't know why. And a lot of you yeah. will add, I'm eating healthy. Yes. And while that's great, health and weight loss are two different things because you can actually gain weight like we've been talking about eating just healthy foods. Yeah, so if you're doing some of these things and you're not realizing that, oh, wait a minute, I'm not tracking this, I could be taking in more calories, we thought maybe this video would help some of you that are struggling. Maybe you're doing some of these things without even knowing it. So hopefully this helps you guys because like I said, Kyle has lost the same amount of weight as me, kept it off for the same amount of time. We both fell for and did all of these things and then realized it and now we make sure that you know we're eating in a calorie deficit so we can keep the weight off, stay lean, whatever it is that we're doing, uh, what our goals are. So hopefully that helps. If you wanna know exactly what I ate to lose the weight, I do have weight loss eBooks and a guilt-free cookbook. Check out the links down below. Use code Nicole to save yourself 10%. I am also sponsored by Huddled, H-T-L-T steps, I call it Huddled. Um, sorry, Greg. <laughs> But um, anyway, they have amazing protein powders. And right now for the holiday season, they have limited edition holiday flavors. So they have Greg Nog and pumpkin pie. Both of these are absolutely amazing. And if you want to try these, you've got to get them now because they're going to be gone after the holidays. Again, use code Nicole to save yourself 10%. Everything, books, supplements, code Nicole. People don't use the code. You don't save money. Use the code, cuties. Okay. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you didn't already so you can get more cool Vincent. Whoa. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that last part was, but it's getting edited out. Oh no, you gotta keep it in because it was just me being <laughs> like that. Okay, and also don't forget to watch this vid, this vid, so that you can get more fun tips on how to lose weight and love it because you should enjoy the journey and love your food and just <laughs> Okay, I better go to bed now. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Love you guys. I'll catch you in the next vids, cutie. Peace. See ya. Remember the friends that weight loss isn't just about the number on the scale. It's also about here and here. Heart and mindset. Fight through it. You can do it. Don't give up.